Hey guys, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 42 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly segment, I do quick reviews on all the games we played last week, go over any interesting board game news, and show any new purchases. This week, I'm going to do a game spotlight on two different games, Seven Wonders Duel and an oldie but goodie named Guillotine. I also played another new game called Steam Time, as well as a few others. And for my birthday, I put together a little vlog of Allison and I going to New York City for the weekend. The first game we played is Seven Wonders Duel, along with the Pantheon expansion. The original Seven Wonders is a card drafting game, which means you get a hand of cards, you choose one to play and pass the rest to your neighbor. Then everyone plays their card at the same time, continue passing around to your out of cards, and the cards do different things, give you resources, allow you to buy other cards, get points. They created a two-player version of it called Seven Wonders Duel. I'm gonna do a quick spotlight on this game now and show you how it works. I'm not gonna go over every rule. These spotlights are something new I've been trying lately where I just give you a brief taste of the game without going into excruciating detail about every single rule to give you an idea of whether or not you would like to purchase this game. Seven Wonders Duel is for two players ages 10 and up and plays in about 30 minutes. In Seven Wonders Duel, each player acquires cards that either give you resources or help advance your military power or scientific progress. The game can end in one of three different ways. If one person moves the military pawn into the opposing player's capital, the game immediately ends and they win with military conquest. If one player collects six different scientific symbols, then the game ends immediately and they win with scientific supremacy. If the game lasts all the way until the end of the third age, you tally points in all the different categories and the person with the highest score wins. To start the game, you draft eight wonders so that each player has four. At the beginning of each age, you set up the card tableau. Each age is set up slightly different. The cards alternate face up and face down. This is how it does a two player drafting variant. You can only take a card on the top layer. If you take a card that causes a card or cards to be revealed, they flip over and are now options for the other player. When you take a card, you pay the cost of the card and put it in front of you. You can also discard a card to get coins or use a card to construct one of your wonders, which grants you special powers. Some of these powers give you resources, coins, military, and potentially another turn immediately. If you ever collect two of the same scientific symbol, you take one of the scientific tokens, which grants you other abilities. The Pantheon expansion adds an additional element of the Pantheon cards to the game. These cards are another action you can take that give you special abilities. Many games that have become popular have come out with card game variants, two-player variants, dice variants, and oftentimes they're not as good as the original. I would say that I actually like Seven Wonders Duel better than the original Seven Wonders. This game is really awesome. Every single move you make impacts the other player. Most of the time, the game actually ends before it gets to the end with either military or scientific progress. So if you haven't played Seven Wonders Duel, I definitely recommend you check it out. It's one of my favorite two-player games. The next game I'm going to spotlight today is Guillotine. Guillotine is for two to five players, ages 12 and up, and plays in about 30 minutes. This is a 20 year old game, it came out in 1998. We haven't played it in a while, but my sister-in-law was in town and she really wanted to play Guillotine, so we pulled it out. We are playing Guillotine with Allison, who's behind the camera over there, my sister-in-law Meredith, and Kinsey. Hi. With a mouthful of food. <laughs> This is the revolutionary card game where you win by getting ahead. So basically, all the nobles are lining up to get their head chopped off at the guillotine here. And you play three days, and each day you deal out 12 nobles in line. And at the end of your turn, you take the one at the front of the line and the noble gets beheaded. The only other twist to the game is some of the cards have different things on them. Like this one lets you draw an additional action card at the end of your turn. You all, these are the action cards which allow you to do things like manipulate the order of the line, move a noble to the front of the line, etc. So you can get the higher point nobles. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. So I'm going to play this card. Choose a player. Look at that player's hand. Choose an action card and discard it. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you targeting? You. Of course you're going to target me. Oh, I think I know which one she's going to discard. I'm going to discard that one. And you take the front noble. Collect an additional noble from the front of the line after you collect this noble. Oh no, so you got the negative one. But at least it was two. 
Yeah, but thanks to someone, I already have two negative ones now. Hey, that was a good card. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten how fun this is. It's a really lightweight game. Only 13 bucks, it's a cheap one. And I love the artwork in this game. It's just really silly. It's got this old medieval time. On the back here, they've got the, the like the town idiot. The, the drawings are just really funny. If you're looking for a really lightweight card game, easy to play, easy to learn, check out Guillotine. The next game we played is Steam Time. Steam Time is for two to four players, ages 12 and up, and plays in about 90 minutes. It took Travis and I only about an hour. Maybe the 90 minutes is if you play with four players. This is a worker placement game. Your little workers are these steamships, and you're traveling through time and visiting various monuments in history. Really cool theme to the game. Travis and I are playing Steam Time. This is a really fun worker placement game where you're traveling through time with these steamship meeples, which are pretty cool. I've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it, Travis? I think it's really cool. I really like the mechanic of how you have all these action spots, and then if I take one action spot here, every round afterwards, I have to go up higher on this track. So then I have to go here, and then I have to go on one of these two for my final action. I really like that mechanic. Yeah, I haven't seen that before in a worker placement game. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to try and play this some more over the next few weeks before I do a full-on spotlight of the game. I really enjoyed Steam Time. My birthday was last weekend, and Allison's is in a few weeks, so we decided this year for our birthdays we would go to New York City for the weekend. Here's a little vlog I put together. It's mostly touristy stuff with a little bit of board games mixed into it. Check it out. We are staying at the Moxie on Times Square, and Ben is platinum, so they put us in this corner room. We haven't seen it yet, but this hotel is super cool. Okay, let's see. Here, come on in. Wow, this is super cute. The sink is out here. I'm guessing the toilet is through the sink here. Huh. There's no nothing. diving. There's not even like a shower curtain. Cute. And they've got like this art on the wall here. And there's not a lot of space here, so they've made everything really efficient. Like these are the chairs, they're hanging on the wall. Wow. Look at that view. That is super cool. It's 12.15 in the morning. There are so many people here, everywhere. It's Happy crazy. Thursday. We are at One World Trade Center. We're gonna check out the observatory. We bought tickets yesterday, so we're heading in. We are at the top of One World Observatory now. You can see the New York skyline in the background. It's got an amazing view here. Hey, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. I almost forgot it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Brooklyn Bridge right there. And the Statue of Liberty is over here. That was really cool, some amazing views. I gotta say my favorite part though was the time lapse of New York City getting built in the elevator on the way up. I feel like I'm inside of dinosaur bones, like a rib cage. We've now arrived at the Starship Enterprise. There's the bowl. There are tons of people here. We're now at Battery Park. Behind me is the famous Castle Clinton. How sad is it that my first introduction to this piece of history was through a video game back in the late 90s by the title of Deus Ex. Anyone get the reference? We're down at Battery Park right on the waterfront. That is the Statue of Liberty. It's got to be below the waist. Here, do it now. Ha! Ah, made you look. One of our friends sent us this hole-in-the-wall french fry place. Thomas Frites? Is that how you say it? It's like a Belgian place. I don't know. It was really cool. It was underground. It was kind of like a dungeon. They had like 30 different sauces to pick from. Kinsey loves baking and really wanted us to go to this Homer Simpson place. It's called Dough. Commons Board Game Cafe in New York was right around the corner from the dough place we just went to. So Alice and I are going to go in there on my birthday and play a game together. 
Allison wants me to pick today because it's my birthday. So I think what we're going to do is play Seven Wonders Duel. Okay, I'm gonna take this one for so it's four coins. And then I get this and I get three. Get to reveal both of these. We just finished Seven Wonders Duel. I got 36 points. <laughs> I got 58. I hardly ever beat Allison at this game. She is really good. He killed me, but I let you win because it's your birthday today. <laughs> It went all the way till the end and we tally points. Usually this game ends on either military conquest or scientific supremacy. I totally thought I checkmated him with the military, but he managed to like finagle some ridiculous move and turn the game around. We just left the Uncommons, the board game cafe, and we are in Washington Park now. It's only one block north of it. They've got 16 chess tables. People are just hanging out playing chess. We are now checking out the High Line. Train tracks come through here, and instead of destroying them, they turn it into an above ground garden. We're in the Meatpacking District, and we're stopping off from the High Line Park to go to Chelsea Market. It's a really cool place. There's lots of shops, some cafes, restaurants, really old school architecture. Love it. You ever heard of a farm to table restaurant? Well, we ate at a farm to tray restaurant. It's more of a fast casual place called Cream Line. It was really good. It had all natural beef, burgers, and you could get burger fry and either beer or wine for around 20 bucks. We just got out of the Book of Mormon musical. It was great. What? We are walking through Bryant Park and stumbled upon this little game shop. It's all free games. You can sit here and check one out and play. If you look behind us, everybody here is playing tons of different board games. They have a lot of the classic games, clearly, because there's a lot of kids here. But they even have games like Suro, Ticket to Ride, Catan. Forbidden Island. And of course there are people playing chess. New Yorkers seem to really like their chess. I got a chili cheese dog from a Nathan's hot dog stand. The original Nathan's is on Coney Island and that is where they hold the national hot dog eating championships every year. We are now going to check out Central Park. What a cool haven of nature in the middle of a big bustling city. We're in the middle of Central Park. What's that statue called? Bethesda. Bethesda, yeah, it's pretty famous. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but that's how it's spelled. It's very really romantic know. out here. Look at all these rowboats. Half of them are rowing backwards, <laughs> so it's entertaining also. We popped into Barnes & Noble on Fifth Avenue. Believe it or not, they have a pretty good selection of board games in here. Barnes & Noble is definitely up their game. Apparently they have a Nintendo store here in New York. I've never heard of that before. We're gonna go check it out. It's in Rockefeller Center. Unfortunately, they are closed. They are only open for brunch. We were gonna go in and uh, see Uncle Vito, but <laughs> he's not here. Uh, if you have not seen Mickey Blue Eyes, it is such an underrated, hilarious movie with uh, Hugh Grant. I highly recommend it. It's one of our favorite movies.
We've got a couple hours to kill, so we're hanging out in the Newark airport playing Seven Wonders Duel with the Pantheon expansion. Instead of taking a card here, I'm going to activate this Pantheon power, which only costs me one because I'm going to use my minus two discount. Okay, one there, which gives me now 12 coins. New York City was a lot of fun. While we were gone, Kinsey had some of her friends over and played The Chameleon. The Chameleon is a game we got a few weeks ago. I did a spotlight on this in episode 41, so if you want more information about this game, go check it out. It's a word game where one person is the chameleon and doesn't know what the secret word is, and everyone's giving one word clues, and the chameleon's trying to blend in and not get caught. It's for three to eight players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 10 to 20 minutes. <laughs> After volleyball practice, we oh, decided yeah, so to cool. play a round of the chameleon. Our topic <laughs> is drinks, and um, yeah. Were you the chameleon? It was clear. I yeah. was the chameleon. <laughs> that song. I didn't know what that yeah. was. Me neither. Oh my god, we all should have never been what it was. I think it's really cool to see my daughter and her teenage friends getting together, hanging out, getting off their phones, and playing some board games. The next game we played is Dice Forge. Dice Forge is becoming one of our go-to games. If we want to play a board game, but we don't have time for a long board game, but we don't want to play a really short, lightweight board game, it's kind of in the middle there. It plays in 40 minutes. It's for two to four players in ages 10 and up. In Dice Forge, you're rolling dice, getting resources, using those resources to purchase new dice faces and upgrade your dice, and also to buy cards which give you re-rolls, points at the end of the game, and special capabilities. First win ever in Dice Forge. Yes. How does it feel? It was pretty funny using this really mean card to screw over Travis. With this card, everyone else rolls their dice and then they lose the resources they roll. And Alex did that twice. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Dice Forge is that there's no downtime. On everyone's turn, everyone rolls their dice and gets resources. Really fun game. Travis got it for his birthday in January and we're still playing it. So check out Dice Forge if you haven't. It's awesome. The last game we played this week is Hanabi. Hanabi is for two to five players, ages eight and up, and plays in 25 minutes. It won the Spiel des Jahres in 2013, which is the board game of the year. It's a cooperative game where you're working together to make runs of the five different fireworks in order of one to five. I learned this week that Hanabi is the Japanese word for fireworks. I really love this game, and I finally talked Allison into playing it again. When she first played this years ago, she did not like it. Let's see what she thought about it this time. Is this your favorite game? This is my favorite game mm -hmm. in the whole world. Are there just certain games that like you play and you're just like, I don't like this game. And you don't really know why you don't like it. You just don't like it. That's how I feel about Hanabi. I don't know. I think because like the clues are so restrictive, like it's more fun to cheat a little bit and be like, pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> No, I also I think I think I don't like it because I don't have control over my own hand. I'm relying on other people to give me clues. And like usually I'll have like a really crappy hand so nobody will give me a clue the entire game and I just sit there with like crappy clues and I never get to play anything. I'm just telling other people what to play. I don't know though. Honestly, I just eh. I just it's not that I dislike it. It's just one of those games that's like eh. I don't really want to play it. That's one of the cool things about board games. You like some, you don't like some. I like this game, Allison doesn't. What do you think? Have you played Hanabi? Do you like it? Or are you like Allison and you don't like Hanabi? I didn't find any interesting news about board games this week. I do have one, not really a purchase, but it was my birthday. For my birthday, we went to my favorite restaurant, Chewy's, with the family. First off, Allison made me this bag, which is awesome. And inside of the bag was, a Yeti tumbler. Check it out. And on the other side, I will not do that. But that is so cool, isn't it? And then my daughter Kinsey is so talented. Check out these cookies that she made. Aren't those awesome? My wife Allison is super crafty, and she made this bag. It's so cool. See, it's got the Snowboard Gamer logo on it and a big meeple. And as you saw in that last video, this Yeti cup, which is amazing. I love it. So for Ben's birthday, I made him some labels. Uh, let's say his logo, Snowboard Gamer. 
And then I made some meeples. How'd you a, make them? A big red one and a little blue one. I used my Silhouette machine, it's a vinyl cutter. And I uh, just imported these files and then cut them out. And here's all the extra that I just peeled off. So now he can start labeling all of his stuff. Thank you, Allison. Go check out her blog. She runs a blog called House of Hepworths. I'll put a link in the description. She does home DIY and crafty stuff. And that's how she made this cup here. If any of you would like a little vinyl meeple like this, send me your address and I'll drop one in the mail to you. You can email me your address to ben at snowboardgamer.com and then I will shoot you one of these meeples here. And for all of you who've stayed this long and listened, this is your reward, a vinyl meeple. Thanks for subscribing everyone. I really appreciate it. I love sharing my passion of board games with the world. Hopefully this gave you an idea of some games that you can play with your friends and family. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>